Please be seated. The court is now in session. The discussion on the resources and related issues has now drawn to a close. The Chamber will now move to a discussion on the co-prosecutor request to assign a Michi Curé Council and advance proceedings. The Chamber has already informed the Acting Director, Deputy Director of the Administration as well as the Chief of DSS and ITU already that they are invited to remain for this part of the discussion as well. I now give the floor to the co-prosecutors in relation to the request to assign a Michi Curé Council uh, and Edwin Proceeding. You may now proceed, Mr. Co-Prosecutor. Thank you, Mr. President. Your Honours. The information Messieurs that we learned this morning, I think, is very important and assists us in talking about our proposal. And I'd like to talk about our proposal both à, as to the QSUM PAL team and the Nunchia team. The situation that Your Honours face is that the court, after hearing from the parties chambre, and taking into account parties, various submissions, made a decision to proceed on this trial while the appeal was pending de, uh, with reduced schedule of court hearings. As was stated by Judge Laverne this morning, I think there were 18 days scheduled left this year, court hearings. In total, there were 24, back in when Your Honours first made the schedule, there were 24 days of evidentiary hearings scheduled, and we've already lost six of those. The defense has simply decided that they disagree with the rulings of the court and they will not obey, according to their clients' informed instructions, the orders of the court. So taking them separately, I'll begin with the Nunchia position, as I understand it. Nunchia position is that they will not participate in the trial proceedings until the disqualification motion pending is resolved. And I do think it's important, it's too bad Mr. Nunchi is not here today, to absolutely clarify that the position of the Nunchi and his team is that if the motion is decided against him, in other words, the disqualification is denied, that then his boycott will end and he will be here. Because as far as the time of the boycott, that obviously uh, is a very important consideration. But this is simply Nunchia deciding, after being informed of all the consequences by his counsel, to defy the court rule the court ruling, under Rule 34, the court is entitled to sit when a disqualification is pending. That's a clear rule in this court, and it's been utilized, I believe, in several, in this trial, in several disqualification motions. I recall at the opening statements in 2011, counsel for Nunchia announced at that hearing that the defense had a disqualification motion pending against one of the judges, and then immediately Nunchia made his opening statement. There was no boycott because the disqualification was pending. In fact, even back in the pre-trial proceedings, in the 1st of February 2008, there's a um, defense filing from the Nunchia team. It's document C1124, and it relates to a uh, application for the disqualification of one of the pre-trial judges. In that motion in paragraph 2, Nunchia Defense wrote, 
As noted by the OCP, the hearing can proceed, and pursuant to Rule 34.5, Judge Ney may either continue to participate in the proceedings, pending a decision of the application, or decide to step down voluntarily. So the defense clearly recognizes that Donc, the law of the ECCC provides an option for the trial chamber or any judge who's disqualified to continue to sit while that motion is pending. And in fact, they've never even tried to establish uh, any prejudice from Nunchia uh, participating while this is pending. Obviously, if the disqualification were granted, uh, the effect on any proceedings that had gone on prior to that would be up to the new trial chamber to decide. So there's no basis for Nunchia to decide to instruct his counsel Donc, not to come to court and participate in these proceedings. It's simply a defiance of a court order. There's absolutely no guarantee that in future proceedings, when the defense, either Q. Sampan or Nunchia, doesn't like a ruling, they will again utilize this tactic if, it's, if it is rewarded. So we urge your honors to recognize that what this amounts to is a informed mm. waiver nous, by Nunchia of juge, his right to have his counsel present in court. He has counsel that's been provided by the defense, droit, both teams. Uh, uh, but we've also heard this morning uh, from both teams that there's no issue of resources, matin, complaints about resources. Q Sampan team also made it absolutely clear their boycott is not based on resources, lack of resources. So the right of Nunchi and Q Sampan to counsel and sufficient resources for counsel has been respected by the court. They have them. They are choosing not to use them. And it's good that the uh, administration is here, because what is the effect on that, of this? Well, first of all, and most importantly, the effect is to delay justice that's been too long delayed. And secondly, and the other clear effect is to prolong the life of this not only trial, but institution, and the cost. And so I think it would be interesting to ask the administration Donc, if this trial is extended, let's say, one month, uh, what is si the cost involved in extending this trial one month, un mois, uh, the total cost, an estimate? Telle now, the Q Sampan team has taken a very different situation, a different, different approach and excuse for not appearing. They've decided we can't work on two cases at one time. Well, this is very interesting, since we also hear counsel say, well, we all have other cases outside of this court. And of course, all of us know as lawyers, it's a very rare occasion that lawyers are only working on one case at one time. In the case of the co-prosecutors, we're working on this case, case two, we'll be working on the appeal, we'll be working on the trial, we'll be working on cases three and four also. So we're quadruple tracked in our work. And we'll be responding not to one appeal, but to two appeals, to double the amount of uh, writing required. So again, Q Sampan has simply made the decision, well, we've decided, my client has told us, don't work on the trial. That is a waiver of his right to have counsel. He has counsel provided by the court, and the court would be perfectly within its rights, I believe, to simply proceed with the trial, with Q Sampan and Nunchi present with no counsel, since they are the ones who have ordered their counsel not to come. But the prosecution suggests it would be even better to appoint an amicus lawyer to make to represent to be a friend of the court to make sure that the defense is uh, defendant's rights are preserved 
s'assurer and this has been done in other instances in international jurisprudence quite a lot in cases like Milosevic par exemple, where the court appointed an amicus la the amicus a does not replace amicus counsel because in this case as in Milosevic was self-represented in this case Nunchi and Kusampan are represented they have their lawyers the amicus is there to make sure for the court's benefit that if these lawyers are not doing their job that still the rights of the accused persons are protected. Now it's unfortunate that this would mean additional resources, costs. But again, I'd ask your honors to compare that cost and ask the administration to compare that cost to the cost of delays in the trial. There is no guarantee, again, that if this boycott is rewarded, that it will not be repeated. Uh, it wasn't clear to me whether the defense for Kusampan, for example, is saying that they will be able to prepare for oral arguments on the appeal at the same time they're doing the trial although they couldn't prepare for the written arguments at the same time. Si elle pas en de le in summation, Your Honours, we believe that this unfortunate situation is completely due to the choices of Q. Sampan and Nunchia after consulting with their lawyers to disrespect and to defy the orders of the court. Uh, that shouldn't be rewarded. We're asking for the trial to go forward and we believe that the appointment of amicus counsel will ensure the integrity of these proceedings as it goes forward. Thank you, Mr. International Co-Prosecutors. I now Merci give the floor to the, the civil party lead co-lawyers for any comments in relation to the assignment of MEC Curie's counsel and advance proceedings. You may now proceed, Mr. Co-Lead Lawyers. Monsieur le Président. Quelques, Thank you, Mr. quelques courts commentaires en, like en soutien à la, à la requête du procureur de devoir désigner un avocat ami, ami de la cour pour assister M. Kiosampan et Nunchia dans le cas numéro 2-2. Nous Mr. avons euh, déposé Kiyosampan hier une, une requête en soutien et je voudrais juste en dire deux mots. À titre liminaire, je l'ai déjà dit et je le redis aujourd'hui, puisque les confrères de la Défense sont présents dans la salle, nous comprenons et respectons le droit fondamental des accusés à participer activement à leur défense. Nous le comprenons parce que nous sommes avocats, parce que nous sommes auxiliaires de justice, et nous le comprenons parce qu'il est dans l'intérêt direct des parties civiles que les accusés participent activement à leur défense. Ceci étant dit, nous pensons que la requête proposée par le procureur permet de conjuguer le respect de ce droit fondamental de l'accusé de participer à sa défense et le droit des personnes que nous représentons, des parties civiles, à avoir un procès rapide. Parce que c'est finalement cet arbitrage-là que vous devrez faire quand vous vous prononcerez sur la requête du, le, du procureur que nous soutenons. Et c'est de là que nous parlons. Pour être clair, nous ne représentons pas ici l'intérêt de la société, l'intérêt public. Nous représentons une somme d'intérêt particulier, d'intérêt privé. Nous représentons la somme des intérêts de 3 867 victimes du régime du Cambodgia démocratique. Et Hank Pic et moi-même sommes chargés de faire la synthèse de ces intérêts. Nous soutenons aujourd'hui qu'il est dans l'intérêt direct de ce groupe que le procès avance, que le procès aille de l'avant de la manière la plus rapide qui soit pour les raisons suivantes. Les personnes que nous représentons vieillissent, elles aussi. Elles ont de plus en plus de problèmes de santé, de problèmes de mémoire, et la Cour en est parfaitement consciente. Elles sont de plus en plus frustrées aussi par la longueur euh, des euh, débats et vous avez vu à quel point ces derniers jours les partis civils euh, 
you parle de cette frustration. Donc nous sommes, nous aussi, parce que nous représentons ces personnes-là, nous sommes contraints de faire valoir cet intérêt qui est au cœur du we mandat des CETC. Je rappelle la règle 21 sur les principes fondamentaux qui gouvernent euh, les euh, CETC. Vous avez à cœur de faire l'équilibre entre uh, you, les droits de la défense fondamentaux et le droit des victimes qui ont un intérêt à ce que le procès aille de l'avant. Sure C'est la raison pour laquelle, après discussion, nous avons décidé de soutenir la requête du procureur, parce que celle-ci nous semble conjuguer l'ensemble des intérêts que vous avez à cœur de respecter dans le cadre de vos décisions. Vous avez la possibilité de faire venir Kyo Sampan et Nunchea à l'audience. C'est absolument clair au niveau des règles. Vous avez le droit de les faire venir, y compris par la force, pour continuer les audiences. Nous pensons qu'il est dans l'intérêt des accusés, dans notre intérêt à nous, partie civile, que ces accusés soient assistés d'un avocat qui permette de garantir que leurs droits fondamentaux soient respectés, raison pour laquelle nous soutenons encore une fois la requête du coprocureur aujourd'hui. Thank you, International Legal Lawyer for Civil Penalties. The Chamber would like now to ask the Nunji's defense if you wish to make any observation or comment. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, there are two preliminary issues I would like to raise before possibly answering the submissions of the prosecutions and the civil parties. The first preliminary question is relating to the civil parties, especially to the lawyers of the civil parties and maybe also to the civil parties in the back. No, My question is the following. Yesterday I read in the Cambodia Daily a report called ECCC warns defense team teams for misconduct. And in this report of the Cambodia Daily, I read the following. Civil party Pen Soon, a member of a victim's association that has recently come together to demand cash reparations from the ECCC, said he fully supported the defendant's boycott. We civil parties are not angry and do not have a bad reaction against the defense team of the two accused, but we think they have done the right thing, he said. Now, who is this Mr. Pensou? In another report in the Cambodia Daily of October 25, Mr. Pensoun is uh, quoted on the action of the civil parties doing the opening of the substantive hearing. It seems that his actions or his protests are supported by a lawyer called Lord Chunti. The Cambodia Daily Report says he's a lawyer from Legal Aid of Cambodia, which represents 1,217 civil parties. Now my question is, a preliminary question to the international uh, colleague lawyer for the civil party, who is she representing? Is she talking on behalf of all civil parties or just a few? That would be my first uh, preliminary remark. My second preliminary remark would be about the status of this hearing. Maybe it's wise, or maybe it seems appropriate to have an introduction to Cambodian law in response to the international co-prosecutor's words. I might remind the international co-prosecutor of Article 12 of the law on the establishment of the extraordinary chambers. Article 12 says the procedure shall be in accordance with Cambodian law. En accord avec le droit cambodgien.
article Three hundred and sixteen of the code of com uh, the, cr the criminal code, code of procedure in Cambodia, a law adopted by Parliament, signed by the King, par, uh, in accordance with uh, apparently the wish of the Cambodian people, as opposed to uh, the internal rules that we are speaking of. Article three hundred sixteen says trial hearings shall be conducted in public. The première instance, uh, However, public. The court may order a complete or partial in-camera hearing if it Mais considers la cour peut that a public hearing will cause a significant danger si to the public order or morality. Un, un the court shall decide by a written decision separate from the judgment Cela on the merits or by a special section within the judgment on the merits. Du jugement avec les motifs the same provision you can find in the internal rules. In principle, any hearing of the trial chamber is held in public. When I look at the internal rules specifically relating to trial management, Article 79, Paragraph 7, set. In order to facilitate the fair and expeditious the conduct of the proceedings, the Chamber may confer with the parties or the representatives as applicable by holding a trial management meeting. Such meeting shall be held in camera unless the trial chamber decides otherwise. The purpose of this meeting will inter alia be to allow exchanges between the parties to facilitate the setting of the date of the initial or of the substantive hearings and to review the status of the case by allowing the accused to raise issues in relation to the issue, including his or her mental and physical condition. Now, having sketch the legal framework, my question is, and that's a preliminary question, why are we having this very fundamental discussion on whether we should have, have amicus curiae of the court, something that doesn't exist in the internal rules, by the way. Why are we having this on camera? Why am I not wearing my robe making a proper argument in front of the public? These are the two preliminary questions I would like to raise, and I think they should be answered before we answer to the merits of the submissions of the Prosecution. Mr. President, I would like to say a word, quite simply, mon confrère Copé, que nous avons nous-mêmes également soulevé hier par le biais d'un mail adressé à la Chambre, à savoir que nous estimons que l'importance des sujets abordés aujourd'hui font qu'il n'y a pas de raison que ça soit huis clos, il n'y a pas d'éléments secrets, il n'y a pas de risque de révéler l'identité de qui que ce soit, il n'y a pas de raison que ces discussions importantes se passent à huis clos et nous estimons que tout cela doit être public. President, do you have any comments or observations to make regarding the issue at hand? Have you quelque chose à dire? Thank you, Mr. President. Yes, Mr. President. I will not uh, make comments regarding the meetings or uh, hearings held in camera. I'd like to respond to the international co prosecutor's uh, statement. We have heard the request made by the international co prosecutor on the request for the Amici Curie Council. Pour la de de la cour. What is requested by the international court prosecutor is not in line with any applicable law of the Kingdom of Cambodia. And I'd like to touch upon this issue, in particular on the Code of Ethics, ethics for Lawyers. Parler de cela et aussi parler du code de choosing and acceptance of lawyers by the accused. As a universal and general principle, the right of the accused is recognized 
by the law in Cambodia le, and le by this court. Je reconnais les droits de l'accusé. I'd like your honors to refer to Article 13 of the agreement between the United Nations de and the Royal Kingdom of Cambodia stipulating the fact on the right of the accused. And I'd like to only focus on two points. One is the selection of counsel through his or her own choice, and that is very important in relation to the request put forward by the international court prosecutors. Nun Chi and Kyo Sun Pon currently have their counsel, and I am the counsel defending my client before this court. And as a counsel for Kyo Sun Pon, I do not give away or abandon my uh, client. Défense, Currently, I am the lawyer for my client, and I work together with my international counterpart. Secondly, on uh, the right to have sufficient time for the defense, that is the, another right of the accused mentioned in the said article of the agreement. So what is requested by the prosecution is related to these two rights. If the chamber forces the accused to have a counsel, that is contradictory to his rights to have his counsel of his own choosing. On ne peut lui imposer un avocat. And that, of course, is in violation of his right. Car Secondly, in reference to the uh, Code of Ethics for Lawyers of the Bar Association of Cambodia, please refer to Article 45 on the substitution and adding of uh, lawyers. Les ou if I am a lawyer for my client, Kyo Sampon, and en I do not uh, resign, how can si another lawyer be assigned to replace my position? And that is clearly contradicting the Court of Ethics. It's like the later lawyer is going to grab my seat and my profession with my client, and this is not applicable. So, through me, I actually do not understand well about the request made by the prosecution on the Amici Council. Of course, if there is a consent from the counsel, the, from the current counsel and from the client, then that should be acceptable. But in this case, it's a Sans clear violation of, of the, the process. Sinon, il violation des droits. And I'd like to stress on the, the time, the, the, all the working hours, and I have repeated it on several occasions, des heures de travail. that if a decision by the chamber is not satisfied by the accused, case in pawn or another accused, and dit. that he instructs his counsel not to uh, attend, that's going to interfere or to have a, a delay on the proceedings in this, in this court. But you have to look at it from un another retard, way. The accused has his full right, and he is not in a position to accept or to acknowledge all the decisions made by the chamber. If there is no need to have the ground of another participating in the, the proceedings or not to have the ground for his defense, there has to be a legal basis or ground that can be used to support and to protect the interest of the client. Il doit y avoir un fondement juridique pour les demandes afin de protéger les intérêts. What we did, it's not actually a boycott. 
But it is a time constraint that we had to, to choose, that we cannot work on two main tasks in parallel. Thank you. President, thank you. And what about the head of uh, the defense support section? Do you wish to make any comment on the request by the MEC Curie Council requested by the prosecution? And before that, I'd like to give the floor first, uh, the, the floor first to Madame Counsel for Q. Sampol. Oui, euh, Monsieur le Président, si euh, le moment de répondre à, yes, à l'accusation est venu, à moins que vous souhaitiez prendre les deux points When soulevés the par euh, la défense de l'UNCA, mais sinon euh, je souhaite euh, ajouter à ce qu'a dit mon confrère Kong Salmon. Rapidement, pour compléter ce qu'a dit mon confrère, il y a plusieurs points soulevés dans... To la requête des coprocureurs. Je voudrais d'abord répondre à la question qui est de dire que nous défions les uh, ordres like de la Cour et uh, de notre statut exactement en tant qu'avocat de la défense devant ce tribunal. Alors je pense qu'il y a d'abord un vrai gouffre culturel juridique entre l'accusation et la défense. Uh, parce que euh, dans leurs écritures, ils indiquent, dans leur, écriture, dans leur euh, requête 321, ils indiquent que nous serions en anglais « officer of the court ». C'est un concept qui n'existe pas dans la culture d'où je viens. Nous sommes, comme l'a rappelé of of ma consoeur euh, des parties civiles tout à l'heure, nous sommes auxiliaires de justice. Ça veut dire que nous aidons à la justice. Oh, Ça veut dire aussi que lorsque nous estimons qu'il y a une injustice, nous ne sommes pas tenus d'aider. Et, encore une fois, comme je l'ai dit tout à l'heure, et je tiens à le rappeler, la question n'est pas de bloquer la procédure, parce que on vous l'a indiqué, nous le savons depuis le départ, si vous voulez continuer la procédure, vous pouvez le faire, si vous voulez forcer M. Kiosampan à venir en audience, oui, vous avez le pouvoir de le faire. La vraie question, c'est, est-ce que c'est dans le respect de ses droits et est-ce que sa défense est effective ou pas Et la requête des coprocureurs, Monsieur le Président, Madame, Monsieur de la Chambre, ce qu'on vous demande de faire, c'est non pas d'assurer les droits de M. Kiosampan ou de M. Nunchia, c'est d'assurer l'apparence de défense. Parce que quand même, c'est même co-procureurs qui nous disent aujourd'hui, pour aller plus vite, désigner un amicus curiae, sont les mêmes qui, dans une requête E314, bar 7, au paragraphe 3, c'était une requête dans laquelle ils demandaient des pages supplémentaires pour répondre à la demande de récusation, de récusation formée par l'équipe de Nyonchea. Ils expliquaient que la raison pour laquelle... Cette demande de réclusation était importante et pourquoi elle n'était pas faisable, c'était que pour permettre à de nouveaux juges d'intervenir et de leur permettre de se familiariser à la procédure, il faudrait de nombreux mois d'attente. Et aujourd'hui, on nous dit, pour vous permettre d'assurer les droits de la défense, il faudrait désigner un amicus curiae qui serait là pour défendre les accusés. Alors qu'il serait peut-être là présent dans la chambre en robe, certainement, mais si il faut de nombreux mois à des juges pour se familiariser avec une procédure de cette taille et de cette complexité, j'en conclue aussi qu'il faudrait le même temps pour un avocat nouvellement désigné pour se familiariser avec le dossier, que de surcroît, cet avocat désigné à un plus curier n'aurait pas l'aval. En tout cas, il faudrait au moins lui demander, je pense que M. Kiosampan est à votre disposition pour y répondre, n'aurait pas l'aval et n'aurait pas de contact avec M. Kiosampan. Et on nous dit que là, ça garantirait, ça garantirait les droits de la défense ça garantirait l'apparence d'une défense, mais certainement pas un droit effectif. Et c'est précisément pourquoi, nous aussi, dans ce procès, dans lequel il y a, en ce moment, concomitance entre une procédure d'appel et une 
une procédure au fond, nous estimons que d'être présent à l'audience alors que toutes nos énergies, selon la volonté de notre client, doivent être concentrées sur l'appel, eh ce ne serait pas une garantie des droits de M. Kusampan d'être correctement défendu s'il s'agissait simplement de faire un acte de présence à l'audience. Alors encore une fois, on nous dit, paragraphe 5 de la requête des au procureur, que nous serions un peu comme si nous faisions un choix à la carte au niveau de la procédure. Mais comme M. Kessampan vous l'a indiqué lorsqu'il a pris la parole le 17 octobre, il s'agit d'un non-choix. Il s'agit de préserver ce qui lui reste de ses droits et de la manière la plus à même de défendre ses intérêts au mieux. C'est un choix forcé, avec un risque, mais un risque qu'il prend. Alors oui, paragraphe 8 de leur requête, les coprocureurs nous indiquent qu'en application de la règle 22.4, nous avons l'obligation de promouvoir la justice, l'effectivité et l'équité de la conduite des, pro des procédures. Et justement, parce que c'est une question d'effectivité et d'équité, une question d'apparence seulement d'équité, ne saurait être satisfaisante, ni pour la défense, ni pour la Chambre. Et pour répondre au paragraphe 9 sur la question de mener la procédure à son terme, il n'a jamais été question, ni pour M. Kessampan, ni pour sa défense, de jamais mener la procédure à son terme. Il s'agit simplement, à un moment particulier de sa défense, au moment où il y a un délai d'appel qui court, de faire en sorte que sa défense soit effective et la plus complète possible dans le cadre de son appel, qui aura, encore une fois, des incidences sur le procès 02-2. Paragraphe 10, on nous dit que le retard occasionné que nous occasionnons euh, par notre opposition de défendre notre client correctement serait euh, téméraire et que il n'y aurait pas de motif raisonnable. Je ne sais pas ce que c'est qu'un motif raisonnable, mais si défendre son client au mieux de ses possibilités, ce n'est pas un motif raisonnable. Si pour M. Kiosampan, la possibilité de se défendre au mieux dans le cadre d'un appel n'est pas un motif raisonnable, je ne sais pas ce que c'est un motif raisonnable. M. Kiosampan n'a jamais dit qu'il ne souhaitait pas assister à son procès 02-2. Il n'a jamais indiqué à ses avocats de ne plus les représenter, bien au contraire. La Chara leur a demandé de les représenter le plus utilement possible à un moment particulier de sa défense. Et puisque des textes de déontologie ont été évoqués dans le cadre de la requête des coprocureurs, permettez-moi aussi, puisqu'on nous donne des leçons de déontologie, de rappeler les textes qui existent et qui prévalent et qui s'appliquent aussi à notre exercice devant cette Chambre. Commençons, puisque nous sommes devant un tribunal soutenu par les Nations Unies, par les principes de base relatifs aux barreaux qui ont été adoptés par le 8e Congrès des Nations Unies le 27 août 1990 à la Havane. Paragraphe 14. Paragraphe 14. En protégeant les droits de leurs clients et en promouvant la cause de la justice, les avocats doivent chercher à faire respecter les droits de l'homme et les libertés fondamentales reconnues par le droit national et international et agissent à tout moment, librement et avec diligence, conformément à la loi et aux normes reconnues et à la déontologie de la profession d'avocat. Paragraphe 15. Les avocats servent toujours loyalement les intérêts de leurs clients. Aujourd'hui, on demande à la Chambre de désigner un avocat qui, non seulement agirait en violation de la volonté du client, mais en plus serait à moins de passer de nombreux mois à prendre connaissance du dossier dans l'incapacité de défendre ses droits les plus élémentaires puisqu'il ne connaîtrait pas le fond du dossier correctement. Autre texte d'anthologique, et je cite le règlement intérieur du barreau de Paris, dont nous dépendons. On nous parle à l'article 21.2.1 de l'indépendance, puisque c'est un texte 
qui a été également cité This par les coupes procureurs dans leur requête, mais euh, avec une interprétation extrêmement partielle, donc euh, je le cite en intégralité. 21.2.1.1 La multiplicité des devoirs incombant à l'avocat lui impose une indépendance absolue, exempte de toute pression, notamment de celle résultant de ses propres intérêts ou d'influence extérieure. Cette indépendance est aussi nécessaire pour la confiance en la justice que l'impartialité du juge. L'avocat doit donc éviter toute atteinte à son indépendance et veiller à ne pas négliger le respect de la déontologie pour plaire à son client, au juge ou à des tiers. Et là précisément, nous en revenons à... Vous avez devancé la demande qui figurait dans la requête du procureur, à savoir nous infliger un avertissement. Mais là encore, compte tenu des instructions claires du client, compte tenu de ses intérêts à ce moment précis de sa défense, nous avons pris en tant qu'avocat une décision, pas forcément dans nos intérêts, puisque nous avons eu un avertissement de votre part, pas pour vous plaire, ni pour plaire à des tiers, mais parce que nous estimons que c'est ce qui est important pour le client. 21.2.1.2 Cette indépendance est nécessaire pour l'activité juridique comme judiciaire. Le conseil donné au client par l'avocat n'a aucune valeur s'il n'a été donné que pour complaisance, par intérêt personnel ou sous l'effet d'une pression extérieure. Là encore, on vous demande de désigner, contrairement aux intérêts du client, un avocat qui n'aurait pas connaissance du dossier, qui n'aurait pas son aval et qui ferait office de d'avocat grand, puisqu'il ne serait pas en mesure de défendre intégralement les intérêts de M. Kiosampan. Et j'en viens au paragraphe 21.2.7 du même règlement intérieur, l'intérêt du client sous réserve du strict respect des règles légales et déontologiques, l'avocat a l'obligation de toujours défendre au mieux les intérêts de son client, même par rapport à ses propres intérêts ou à ceux de ses confrères. Enfin, et c'est peut-être au cœur hein, du débat aujourd'hui, puisqu'on nous accuse de défier sans raison et de bloquer la procédure, hein, parce qu'aussi nous serions des avocats non diligents et non compétents. C'est ce que j'ai cru comprendre hein, des questions de la Chambre ce matin. Paragraphe 21.4.3. Respect du juge. Tout en faisant preuve de respect et de loyauté envers l'office du juge, l'avocat défend son client avec conscience et sans crainte, sans tenir compte de ses propres intérêts et de quelconque conséquence que ce soit pour lui-même ou toute autre personne. Et que l'on ne vienne pas me dire, comme c'est avancé de l'autre côté de la barre, que le code de conduite des avocats au royaume du Cambodge ne prévoit pas ce type de situation puisque dans les articles 4 et 5 de ce code d'éthique, on nous parle de la nécessité de protéger les droits humains et la justice, la nécessité d'exercer avec liberté et indépendance. Et on nous dit aussi, à l'article 37 de ce même code, que l'avocat a le droit de présenter n'importe quel l'un point n'importe quel élément qu'il perçoit pour le bénéfice de son client. Article 38 du Code de conduite des avocats, un avocat doit demander, doit exiger et faire des efforts pour qu'il y ait un procès équitable, un vrai procès équitable dans le respect de la loi et des procédures. Et on nous demande aujourd'hui de désigner un avocat qui serait ami de la cour, mais qui ne serait pas mandaté par le client, qui n'aurait pas les moyens d'assurer sa défense et qui serait, encore une fois, qu'une simple présence ne garantissant aucunement, puisque c'est le fondement de la requête des coprocureurs soutenus par les parties civiles, qui ne garantirait aucunement la vraie effectivité de l'exercice des droits de la défense. Pour M. Kusampan, c'est très clair, la vraie effectivité de son droit 
être défendu correctement, c'est de faire en sorte qu'il puisse, comme il le souhaite et comme il en a le droit, se défendre complètement devant la cour d'appel, avant de revenir une fois qu'il aura terminé son mémoire d'appel, qui encore une fois, lorsque j'entends de l'autre côté de la barre qu'on nous dit « mais c'est un mauvais précédent, on pourrait utiliser ça à n'importe quel moment ». Ce n'est pas n'importe quel moment. Monsieur le Président, Madame, Monsieur de la Chambre, c'est le moment, le seul appel Mr. possible honest, sur un jugement que vous avez rendu, le seul appel possible qui permette d'avoir sanctionné ou pas des éléments et de fait et de droit que vous avez utilisés et que vous êtes susceptibles d'utiliser aussi dans le cadre du procès de Rodebardeau. Quel cas, en attendant même la décision de la Cour suprême, qu'il n'a pas la connaissance de tous ces éléments, qui, qui ne sait pas ce que M. Kusampan conteste ou ne conteste pas, qui ne connaît pas l'intégralité du dossier, serait en mesure d'assurer, comme vous l'indique les coprocureurs, un vrai procès équitable et d'assurer la défense réelle des droits de M. Kusampan. C'est un leurre. C'est un leurre. Et compte tenu des délais dont nous, nous avons parlé ce matin, ce que nous avons évoqué, de toute façon, si c'est en termes de rapidité que l'accusation conçoit les choses, je pense que nous sommes face à euh, une vraie difficulté pour arriver à leur proposition. En tout état de cause, la proposition des coprocureurs est non seulement déraisonnable en termes de délai, mais elle ne permet pas, comme elle le soutient, de respecter les droits de la défense. Et comme je vous indiquais tout à l'heure, quand même là, le premier concerné étant M. Kiosampan, il a depuis ce matin manifesté le désir de répondre personnellement euh, sur cette requête et c'est d'ailleurs la raison de sa présence ce matin et je vous demande donc l'autorisation de lui permettre de prendre la parole. Mais je vous demande la chambre de lui donner la parole. Mr. President, you may now proceed to Mr. Kiyosampan. Kiyosampan, vous avez la parole. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Merci, Monsieur le Président. I have read the the letter dated on 22nd October 2014. I am very doubtful, and I am sure that there will be a matter raised in relation to my rise and my defense team. For this reason, I am here today. So, so it is now true that today we discuss this matter. The co-prosecutor requests to assign a Michi Curie Council. Les co-procureurs demandent la désignation d'un avocat. I would like to inform the chamber and everybody that je tiens à informer la chambre et tous ici présents is to dismiss my council que cette demande équivaut à une demande. So far. I have been working very hard. I have been in the court hearings, and my counsel are all here regularly. So I do not have an I do not have any intention to obstruct the proceedings. If I were outside the courtroom, I was. In the detention, that it is my intention to obstruct the proceeding, but I am here. So what is the interest to delay the proceeding? I am here. So what is the interest to delay the proceeding? I am here. So what is the interest to delay the proceeding? So the assertion, the argument of the co-prosecutor, is moot. It's not correct. I have never mentioned that I have never mentioned that I dismiss my counsel. So there is no reason to dismiss my counsel. 
que je voulais me séparer de mes avocats. And as for euh, Amicus Curie, I do not really understand. They may not understand quand, um, my case. So how could they defend my case? Que je ne connais pas et qui ne comprendrait éventuellement euh, my counsels, le dossier, they have been working with me serait-il en mesure de me défendre? For mes three years. Travaillent avec moi depuis trois ans. In Sometimes they may come to me and ask for clarification on some issues. Et viennent euh, fréquemment me consulter afin de so clarifier certaines questions. So I would like to make clarification on this point. And uh, in some cases, uh, my counsel may not understand well uh, some of the points. Uh, they have to come Parfois, to me and si seek my clarification. What if there are new uh, lawyers? They do not really understand uh, my case. They just come for the sake si of defending. They come to be in the show dossier, trial. Pour raison cet so là I want to make clear on this point. I absolutely do not accept Alors, any new lawyers, new counsel. Bien compris que je Thank you very much. Pas de nouveaux avocats. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Mr. President, you may not proceed, Judge Fentz. Le Président, le Juge Fentz, vous avez Just an attempt to streamline today's hearing. Um, this is for the defense of Mr. Nunchia. Uh, we obviously took note of what you said in the beginning, and as far as legally relevant, it appears to boil down to a request to make the results of today's hearing public. Now, the President has authorized me to ensure you this will happen. Um, now, my question is, <coughs> or our question is, do you wish to comment on the substance? Because you haven't done this so far. <coughs> Um, thank you, Judge Fence. I, th I think, and I apologize for that, my request maybe wasn't understood well. I think it is our firm belief that this hearing should be in public. We should wear our robes. We should have a debate, a public debate on this very fundamental issue. Publishing a video of a hearing later is not the way it is supposed to be done. So this is a very fundamental adversarial issue, which does not belong on a trial management hearing. It has nothing to do with trial management. It goes directly to the fairness of the proceedings. So the request is to stop here, to reconvene at any appropriate time with our ropes on, to publicly debate this issue. That is the request. That's the request. Mr. President, you may not proceed. Uh, call it lawyer, legal lawyer. Le co-avocat principal des parties civiles, vous avez la parole. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank Avant you, que vous President. rendiez votre décision Just sur le caractère public de l'audience, il me, il me paraissait important de répondre à la, à la remarque liminaire de, de mon confrère de la défense sur qui nous représentons de ce côté-ci de la barre. Euh, je voulais simplement rappeler ce qui paraît être la base, le règlement intérieur et la règle 12 ter 5 
du règlement intérieur qui nous représentons. Nous représentons le groupe consolidé des partis civils. Les avocats de la défense ne sont pas sans savoir que les partis, les partis civils ne participent plus individuellement à la procédure au stade du procès, mais qu'elles participent par l'intermédiaire d'un groupe consolidé dont Ankik et moi-même défendons les intérêts. Alors concrètement, comment on défend les intérêts d'un groupe composé de 3867 partis civils eh bien, on opère un exercice difficile et quotidien de synthèse et à chaque fois que Ang, Pic ou moi-même prenons la parole et prenons une position publique dans cette salle d'audience, c'est au nom du groupe consolidé des partis civils que nous, que nous parlons. Je rappelle que cette interprétation Claire a été euh, à nouveau euh, validée par le jugement que cette chambre a rendu le 7 euh, août dernier et que nulle part dans la notice d'appel de Nunchea, vous avez la remise en cause de quelque manière que ce soit de la façon dont la représentation des partis civils a été exercée à l'audience lors du cas 002-01. Alors, deux choses. Soit le commentaire euh, de la défense de M. Nunchia so, relève uh, de l'anecdote de la, du jeu d'audience, comme on dit en, en, en français, et à, à ce moment-là, eh bien, fair enough. Uh, uh, si le, uh, le but du commentaire the, uh, de mon confrère Copé était de souligner la difficulté pour nous au quotidien de faire la synthèse des intérêts du groupe consolidé, eh bien, le point est clair et... Et figurez-vous, chers confrères, que je le partage, et c'est effectivement un défi quotidien qui est le nôtre. Si, au contraire, le but du commentaire de, de mon confrère est de souligner quelque chose de plus systémique, et de, à chaque fois que Hank Pick ou moi-même, nous prendrons la parole dans cette salle d'audience, nous allons avoir la défense qui va se lever pour critiquer notre légitimité et notre droit de prendre la parole au nom du groupe consolidé. Alors là, j'invite la Chambre, et je sais, je l'ai déjà fait, mais j'invite la Chambre à être très claire et à apporter des clarifications nécessaires pour réaffirmer le rôle qui est le nôtre et notre droit de porter la voix du groupe consolidé des partis civils, seul parti à l'audience dans ce procès. Merci. Mr. President, uh, I now Le give the floor to the international co-prosecutor. You may now proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. To begin with, I see it's Merci, quarter to 12, Je vois and I initially want to uh, say that as we stated, as I stated, at Alors, the last trial management meeting, in which the defense teams did not appear, I felt the issue of discussing the defendant's boycott of the proceedings should be done in public. Boycott, uh, and again, I reiterate that, and I would support the defense motion. I'm completely indifferent to whether we wear robes or not, but um, I would ask Mais now for your honors to consider coming back at 1.30 with the doors open and in public hearing. If you do not want to do that, then I do have some other comments to make. Uh, so I first would ask you to consider that, and then if you instruct me to go on, I will go on now with my further comments.
Mr. President, now I give the floor to Judge Fence to respond to the comments made by the defense team for Mr. Nguyen Chia and also the comments made by International Court Prosecutor. You may now proceed, Judge um, the, the chamber notes that uh, the trial management meeting had various objectives. Um, some of them let the chamber this, or the nature of some of them let the chamber decide that it should be in closed session. Now, as I've mentioned before, the chamber agrees that the debate on this issue, meaning the issue of amicus curiae, should be public. Um, there are various ways to achieve this. Uh, the chamber rejects the request to adjourn and reopen in open session in the afternoon. It will, however, publish the um, contents or the tapes uh, of um, the trial management meeting. Uh, we wish to point out that this whole debate could very well be in writing only. There is no absolute need to do this verbally. We have chosen to do it for expeditiousness sake. Um, therefore, the time to make substantive arguments is now and only now. And may I just, because I think it's easier if the prosecution answers once we have everything from the defense. And so I'm asking again Mr. Um, Coppe if he wishes to comment on the substance. Thank you, um, Judge Fens, members of the trial chamber. Um, as indicated by me earlier, I think this is a very principled issue. Um, we have received the submissions by the prosecution um, only a few days ago. We have been able to, de in a il y a sketchy jours sense of the word, discuss the content of that request Nous with our client yesterday. En avec notre client hier. The position of our client in respect of that request Alors, has been made, I think, abundantly clear in his personal letter de notre of yesterday, the same day, to the chief of the defense section, Mr. Section d'appui à la défense, Monsieur Andelay. Nunchia will categorically refuse Nunchia any refuse form of amicus curiae forced upon him or any other lawyers forced upon him. Avocat, amicus curiae, ou tout autre avocat. So that is our very preliminary position. The question is uh, whether we should and how we should deal with this matter. La question est de savoir um, comment. Uh, Again, cette question. it should be in a public hearing, but you have rules, so I will give you, public, you right now some preliminary remarks uh, that I have. Donc, uh, As observed uh, by the prosecution and other parties, our position Comme in this whole matter is indeed different remarqué, from the Kyrgyz and Panti. It is our firm belief that Cambodian law is very strict on what judges should do in the matter of uh, uh, request for disqualification. I can repeat what I said earlier about um, how we should interpret the legal framework within the proceedings within the ECC. Article 560. Article 595 of the Cambodian Code of Criminal Procedure is very clear. The judge shall step down while a decision uh, is pending on disqualification. You have chosen to give primacy 
not to vous avez choisi the law of this country but to internal rules non pas which are clearly contrary la loi to, de ces pays um, mais le règlement Cambodian law. intérieur qui est clairement it is true euh, as the prosecutor said that in, in the past we have chose not to pursue this passé, issue. Le dit However, our disqualification motion, 45 pages, Néanmoins, notre after a judgment in which our client was convicted to a life sentence, un jugement is so fundamental, à la so principled, à that to me, that to us, that to Nguyen Chia, it is incomprehensible est une that you have decided to go ahead anyway, that you have issued a scheduling order in the full knowledge that we were going to file this uh, request for disqualification. As a matter of fact, in the previous trial completion report, it was expressly indicated that this request would come and that Proceedings would be delayed, possibly with one or two or three months. The fact that you haven't done that, the fact that um, the trial chamber has showed, as we would like to see it, contempt for the proceedings, contempt for Cambodian law, was the reason that Nguyen Chia took this very unusual decision. Decision which he has never done, which he has never made before. Décision, d'ailleurs, qu'il n'a jamais prise auparavant. Abided by rules, procedures, etc. In trial two one. Il s'est toujours conformé aux règles de procédure. But now he has said enough. Is enough. Dans le dossier zéro zéro deux bar zéro un, mais maintenant, pour nous, c'est suffisant. So this is just again to clarify the principal position of our of our client. Je voudrais donc. Now there's many things that I can say about. The very opportunistic way of operating with the prosecutions and the civil parties in immediately Quant jumping on this issue uh, by asking uh, for the appointment of an amicus curiae. It's almost like the child in the schoolyard complaining with the teacher that the other children are cheating. Qui, uh, it feels like that. Va, uh, voir, uh, in his behavior, I think, um, not fitting the office of the prosecution. Notwithstanding all this, notwithstanding the opportunistic moves of the prosecution, uh, we can give a preliminary reaction. I think um, the chief of the defense section is perfectly able to tell you that it would be highly unpractical to even consider this idea. I believe it was his words of last week's trial management meeting that it will take up to at least four months to even find an appropriate counsel. I suspect, but I stand corrected if I'm wrong. On me corrigera si je me trompe, mais the qualifications for an amicus curiae will be the exact same. Je pense que As the qualifications un uh, for an amicus curiae, curiae doit avoir toutes les I mêmes qualifications d'un autre avocat for et je any pense amicus to il faut au moins six mois uh, pour qu'un avocat amicus curiae the case file and everything that happened in the last three years. But I'm sure from a practical années, point of view, Mr. Endele is quite capable and authorized to Anderley give these remarks. Pourra one other point I would like to make is, is if uh, we have a look again at the holy grail of the trial proceedings here, the internal rules, I don't see any provision in the internal rules that allows the trial chamber to appoint an amicus curiae. We are in a civil law system. Nous sommes dans un système de droit romano-germanique et le phénomène d'amicus curie n'existe à ma connaissance que I dans le système de droit commun. System, which is a civil system, uh, je viens uh, d'une juridiction uh, de droit civil uh, uh, 
in 160 years of criminal law, criminal procedure in Holland, wherever, whenever an amicus curiae was appointed. I'm sure my French colleague will confirm this. My Cambodian colleagues can say that no such thing as amicus curiae exists within Cambodian proceedings. We're always being accused of using tactics and strategies and delays and what have you. I think what we're having now, what we're facing, is tactics and strategies in the prosecution. Very opportunistic ones, as I said earlier. The position of our client is still clear. We are waiting for a decision. Of the special bench. Nous attendons une uh, décision. We have no idea when that decision will come. Uh, collège uh, spécial de juge, uh, in, sans savoir in, in my own domestic proceedings, decisions like this uh, are pays, usually rendered within days after this qualification motion. Uh, so I'm not après quite une sure why it would take very long. Il, uh, de we temps. have, our client has quoted the spokesperson of this tribunal saying that it will last at least three months. Uh, Whether that is the case, I'm not sure. De ce tribunal a indiqué que la décision but I do au moins anticipate that if we have Alors, uh, je sais pas plus, mais an imminent decision, or we have a decision soon, si and it will be an unreasoned decision, or a decision with reasons to follow, je crois savoir I'm not que sure. Ce sera une décision whether that would satisfy the position of Eurotia. Si but our position is uh, to take a step-by-step -step approach in this matter. Nous, uh, Especially in the light of the fact that étape. the issues that we have raised in our disqualification motion Surtout go directly to the independence of national judges. So it might very well be possible that we will have a split decision at the special bench or maybe the dissenting opinion of one of the international judges. But let's cross the bridge when we get there. Right now our position I think is crystal clear. Uh, à l'heure d'aujourd'hui, notre position Our client has est très claire. Us notre client nous a donné l'instruction de hearings. ne pas participer as long as no aux audiences au fond to a point sans an que la now décision ne soit rendue. Nommer un avocat amicus curiae aujourd'hui serait non seulement ridicule euh, du point de vue pratique, every principle mais serait of une violation des principes d'équité, de procès uh, équitable dans ce dossier. Merci. Thank you. Le Président. President, you may now proceed, Judge Fenn. Merci. Yeah, la just Fenn. two additional questions directly pertaining what you just said. J'ai deux autres um, questions. Did I understand you correctly? I, I haven't heard compris. about the idea of a decision without reasons to follow, but Moi, je pas since you raised it, if a decision with reasons to follow came, uh, uh, le you are basically faire, saying we might not participate si from then cas, onwards either. Vous dites que and vous this leads to the obvious last question. What happens if the decision you get is not to your liking? The reasoned decision you get is not to your liking. Um, thank you for this question, Judge Fenz. Um, but to be honest, there is only one person that can answer your questions. And he is not in this question. Uh, uh, we are acting solely. Exclusively on his instructions. If he tells us uh, this is unsatisfactory, we as civil law lawyers are bound by his instructions. We are not officers of this court. I cannot repeat that enough. So our ethical rules 
would prohibit us from participating. I'm not saying that our client will instruct us as indicated. I'm not saying it is a given that whatever decision, reasoned or unreasoned, negative or positive, will be the end of his present instructions. I'm not, again, I'm not saying that he will. It's up to him and only him. Signifiera la fin de ses instructions. C'est à lui de décider. Mr. President, what about the chief of DSS? Qu'en est-il du directeur de la DSS? Have you got any comments to be made? In relation to the appointment or assignment of uh, Amicus Curie and advance of the proceeding, advancement of proceeding, rather, you may not proceed. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, yes, indeed, I do have um, a few observations. Um, first of all, I believe Ms. Anta Gise and Mr. Victor Kope have both. Um, very properly articulated uh, the main defense position, and the DSS is 100% behind them. Um, the reasons that they have uh, given for the current situation is fully, uh, are fully supported by the defense support section. Um, so I'm not going to go into the details of what they've already said. I don't need to repeat those. What I'd just like to point out to you, first of all, uh, to remind the court that in addition to the uh, accused person's right to participate fully in their own defense, they also have a right to be represented by counsel of their own choosing. That's a fundamental right that's uh, practiced at all the major tribunals around the world. Um, so having counsel here who do not have the approval of the accused, who are unable to consult with the accused, who are unable to receive instruction from them, will not actually be representing the accused. They may be representing the interests, but not the accused themselves. Um, I received yesterday, as Mr. Cope has just um, mentioned, I did receive yesterday, 27 October, a letter from Mr. Nunchia. Uh, it's a fairly short letter. I'll just read to you uh, the concluding paragraph, uh, a quick translation into English. Today, I have been informed that the prosecutors want the ECC to appoint new lawyers. Let me be very clear to you. It is my absolute stance that I shall not accept, under any circumstances, new lawyers. I have absolute faith and confidence in Son Arun and Victor Kope. If the court decides to appoint new lawyers, I shall not accept them and I shall refuse si to come to court. Only by use of force shall I attend any hearing. I would like to invite you to my cell so that you can hear my position in person." End of quote. Um, Your Honor, the mandate of the defense support section is, in fact, to support the defense. It is, in fact, to ensure that the accused have all the facilities guaranteed by the law, um, under the law, to protect their rights, to protect themselves. Having counsel that is not the, uh, the counsel chosen by the accused persons does not protect that right. Uh, actually, it's in violation of, of the right. So it will be very, very hard for the defense support section to support counsel that are not assigned, uh, that are not chosen and are not approved by the suspects, even if they are um, imposed by the court. Um, I think maybe I should pause there for now, but I'll be ready to clarify if, if need be. Thank you, Your Honor. President, thank you. The Chamber would like to give the floor now to the International Co Prosecutor, and you may proceed. Your Honours, I just have one question for Mr. Edley, if I may. Um, may I ask a question to the head of the Defense Support Section? Thank you. Sir, in your view, how is Defense Counsel that you have uh, appointed pursuant to the choice of counsel of, of the des accused persons, counsel of their choice, who were provided resources by your office, how do they protect the rights of the accused if they don't go to court? Um, Your Honor, may I? Thank you, Your Honor. 
Monsieur le juge, um, I believe one of the defense counsel earlier um, quoted from a statement made Je last year by Judge uh, Jean-Marc Lavigne, where he said uh, the work of, um, of judges, and I suppose the work of lawyers, is not only when they're in court, it's also when they're, away, when they're in the offices. Um, we receive work schedules on a monthly basis from the defense teams, and we're quite aware of the um, work that they do to represent the clients, even when court proceedings are not on. Um, uh, as you know, they read and respond to motions by the other parties, they make motions of their own, and they prepare to cross-examine witnesses, they're working on appeals briefs, and many other things. So they do represent the client even if they're not sitting in the courtroom. Thank you. I think my question was misunderstood, but I, I could have general comments, and I think rather than pose questions, I can make it in the form of comments. I think there seems to be a fundamental misunderstanding by all of the defense counsel that have spoken from the letter Munchia and from what he said in court here today, Q. Sampan, about what is being proposed by the prosecution. We have not proposed at this point to replace counsel, although that we believe is certainly open to your honors if counsel continue to obstruct proceedings. We have not proposed that. They have counsel of their choice. The defense office has appointed them. The defense office has provided them with resources. The court has invested millions of dollars in the defense of the accused persons. And they're here and capable. The issue is they're not willing to, to participate in the trial under the instructions of their clients. So they have counsel. The court has provided it. The court has paid for it. They're choosing not to use it. Now, the amicus that we are proposing is not a counsel appointment. He does not represent the accused. They have the lawyers already. And they can go to court. Any day they want to, Ms. Gise, Mr. Kope can go to court and cross-examine the witnesses or do whatever else is required. But if they're sitting outside of court, they can't do a cross-examination. They can't object to the prosecution questions. So we propose, while the court could simply go on with the trial with no one being present other than the accused persons, to further the integrity of the proceedings, that an amicus be appointed who would make sure that the rights of the defendant are respected, to object to prosecution questions, to make submissions, to do cross-examination. No one is proposing to replace counsel. And since these amicus are there to ensure the integrity of the proceedings, to ensure your honors that defense interests are protected, they are not the lawyers for the accused, and they don't need to be chosen by the accused. The accused may choose to cooperate with them and consult with them, or they may choose not to, but they have their own counsel. The counsel are here, and it's the only, they're only saying they will not participate because they disagree with rulings of the court. So I'd like to also address particularly the Nunchia point and address the question that um, uh, Mr. Kope put to me, and that is about Kope. the Cambodian law and Rule 38. Your Honor, since 2008, motions for disqualification have been made, and I believe... International co-presenter, please uh, wait. I think we are running out of uh, DVD recording facility now.